I haven't rated Yu-Gi-Oh cards in a while. I've heard that there are new cards released recently. Stevie, can you confirm? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, Konami is still a company, so we do have to deal <laughs> with the plague that is Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, has Yu-Gi-Oh gotten better or worse since the last time we spoke about it? To give you a mathematical representation, out of the past five events, one deck has taken up about over 70% of top cut slots. That's disgusting. And they don't nerf any cards? Uh, you know, they only nerf cards once every three or five months, if we're lucky. <laughs> okay, well, that sounds miserable. Uh, super sorry for your loss. I'm hoping you found something else to play in the meantime. Okay, so we're rating 10 cards uh, from, I'm guessing, the newer sets of Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Yeah. Don't worry, there aren't going to be any curveballs. This isn't any, you don't have to, you don't need any archetype knowledge. These are all pretty straightforward and none of these are bait. <laughs> all right, we got the first card. We got Spellbound. All face up bosses your opponent currently controls can't be attributed or used as a material for fusion, synchro, XYZ, or link summon until the end of your turn. End of this turn. Wow, that seems really good. From what I remember, cards that stop your opponent from doing the things they want to do are pretty great in Yu Gi Oh! So this is a banger, easy 10 out of 10. All right, so I'm gonna paint you a little picture. Oh no. When this card was announced, when this card was leaked, uh, maybe a month or two before the set officially dropped, pre-release prices for this card were upwards of $75 a copy. After about a week, this card dropped to about $3 a copy. <laughs> it only affects the monsters that your opponent currently has face up on the field. And if they just have any way to extend or make uh, XEs with XEs, fusion synchros in other locations outside of the field, then you're basically cooked. Like you're sauced up. It's, it's over. You basically just <laughs> spent $70 on a worthless bookmark. I see. Unfortunately, yeah. It, it's just it's just missing too many pieces. Wait, so the value of a... I think you've talked about this before, but the value of a Yu-Gi-Oh card is dependent on how strong it is in the current format, correct? It is extremely correlated, yes. Okay. Okay, wow. All right, well, zero for one. That was good. 90% is still passing. That's true. That's true. I'm going for the big 50. <laughs> let's get it. All right. Let's get the next card. All right. What the hell is this thing, by the way? What I the hell? I don't know. I think it's a fan. <laughs> I don't know. All right. If your opponent has activated a monster effect during your main phase this turn, activate one of these effects. Draw two cards. Take control of one monster your opponent controls until the end phase. Look at your opponent's hand and choose one from one card from it to shuffle in the deck. Wow. I have to remember, it's been a while from the mechanics of this game. Like your opponent plays a card and then you can be like, oh, I'm playing the spell card now. And then I'm going to look at your hand and just get rid of the card. And then they just cry in the corner because you just they just lost pretty much. Right. Essentially. I'm imagining essentially. Yes. OK. OK. Uh, so Kleenex boxes are absolutely mandatory at Yu-Gi-Oh events. I mean, it's definitely spicy. It's something that your opponent definitely has to consider, right? And I feel like this card is just like way, 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 way stronger than the last one because you have so much versatility. Like this card could do so much for, I guess, so little as long as you have it ready to go. I don't know. I think it's pretty good. Uh, you're 100% correct. This card is absolutely bonkers. <laughs> okay, hell yeah. Yeah, Woo! who would have guessed? Drawing two cards, good. Take If it's like turn three or four and you can attack, you just steal one of their monsters. If you're like, you know, going first and it's turn one and your opponent uses a monster effect that's like a hand trap to try and interrupt you, you could just be like, oh, okay, I'm going to look at your hand now and take your best card and you are going to cry while I continue to do my silly little combo. Oh my God. Yeah, it seems like a pretty nutty card. Damn, dude. Okay. Well, all right. One all right. for two. We Feels good. Those. Big fan. Let's not, let's let's. Uh, w w how many of these do you think I'm gonna get? Realistically, I think you're gonna get seven. Oh! All right, I'm gonna write that down. Third card. Oh, what the hell is this? I, don't okay. know. I, um... saw, I saw a Japanese movie have it one time. <laughs> so okay. One of those Chinese cartoons. <laughs> what is uh, this? Is okay. Destructive Daruma Karma Cannon. I think I pronounced the second word correctly. I'm gonna go with that. Trap card. All right. Char uh, change as many monsters on the field as possible to face down defense position. Then, if either player controls a face up monster, they must send all face up monsters they control to the graveyard. Oh my god. Holy moly. Wow, this is, this is, okay, just like the last card, the versatility on this is absolutely bonkers. This has, no, no, okay. no, no, no. this has to be insane. How is this not insane? How is this not like a, a 10 out of 10 card? I'm trying to, just, no, it's, it's, bro no, it's broken. Banned? Potentially, 
I don't know if they've done bands recently. This has to be insane, right? Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. Facts. This is one of the worst trap cards ever printed. <laughs> oh, what? Isn't that nuts? Okay, so theoretically, if your opponents, you know, swarm in the board, trying to set up their combo, you could just flip this on them. So, you know, theoretically, it stops their turn. Theoretically. <laughs> In actuality, there are a lot of ways to just play around not just getting every zone clogged up by being like, I will commit five resources and do nothing with them. I sure hope my opponent does not flip like a zone locking card like this. And also, sure. 25 years ago, a better card of the, a better version of this card was printed called Torrential Tribute, which you can read right now. Uh, when a monster is summoned to destroy all monsters in the field. Oh. <laughs> Uh, this card is actually like, I'm going to cope my way through this. I, I want you to realize how hard I'm coping here. This card isn't bad. There's just better cards, correct? Um, no, no, it's pretty bad. <laughs> no, this card's not good. All right, fair enough. All right, next card. All right. Oh, my God. What the hell? Goaty? <laughs> Of okay. the deep beyond? Okay, is that were, what it is? Were you around for like stupid ass Reddit memes? Okay, if the G sound in England, in, wait, in enough is pronounced F, and the O in women makes the short I sound, and then the T I in nation is pronounced sh, <laughs> the word goatee is pronounced just like fish. Wait, what the hell? So the, it's fish th of the deep beyond? <laughs> That's the joke, yeah. <laughs> what the? I like the name goatee, actually. That sounds pretty sick. The original attack of this card becomes 500 times the number of banished monsters. Oh. Okay, uh, that's a, what the hell? So it can have a spicy amount of attack. If it gets special summoned again, does it keep the previous attack? And then it, it would also get more attack if you banish more cards? Just yes. so I understand. I don't know how relevant that is because the second tech seems very strong. Banishing cards on the field? What the hell? And you could do it on your opponent's turn? Okay. Um, I mean, I haven't been wrong yet. Uh, this <laughs> card is absolutely, this card is absolutely broken. What are you talking about? Man, it's gotta be in, Oh my god, I'm second guessing myself with the last card. But again, th this effect is so good. I'm gonna go with this probably pretty great. Goaty is a good card. He lives uh, up to his name. All right, so let me paint you a picture. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> when this card was revealed, it was actually, people theorized that this card would actually be pretty good. It's got a really good removal effect. It's got a big booty. How could this fish, oh. how could this fish flop? Well, it turns out. Sure. Uh, oh, I like that. That was good. <laughs> well, it turns out this fish do be flopping because every single possible generic card that could make it easier to summon Goaty, stuff like uh, Aurorodon, which was a monster that just summoned tokens, which allowed, which made Synchro Summon extremely easily, that got banned. A card called Krishan Halka Fibrax that summoned tuners from the deck, that got banned. <laughs> After those two playmakers and a bunch of other stuff sort of just got hit around it, unfortunately, this card was too specific to be played in, you know, generic combo pile blah 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 decks, and it was way too uh, low impact to as the sole payoff of, ah uh, yes, I will play with fish. So what I'm basically saying, and again, I'm gonna cope my way through this, um, is this card has the potential to be absolutely nutty if the summoning is easier. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so technically in a vacuum, this card is not bad. <laughs> we'll give you half a point. <laughs> all right, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. All right, what do we got? Ultimate Slayer, that was actually my name in high school. Huh? <laughs> Your opponent can activate monsters effects in response to this card's activation. Send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard and the one target monster your opponent controls with the same card type, shuffle it into the deck. Now this card suffers from an issue that is very specific because if your opponent is not running the same kind of monsters as you, or I guess the same summoning type as you, like this card feels like it's not very, very good. Opponent cannot activate monsters effects in response to this card's activation. So does that mean your opponent can't use any monster effects any monster effects oh okay that's even better than i thought it was gonna be i think it's good i would play this i think this is great this has to be good yeah this is good yeah for sure all right so all right so let me paint you a picture god <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean i one of these you're gonna it's gonna be like a, a big meme right you're gonna let me paint you a picture i'm gonna think it's bad and then out of nowhere you're gonna be like but it's broken it actually turned out to be that broken right this is the card okay perfect okay so this card isn't exactly <laughs> bad it's it's a oh. very okay card so sure 
on so everyone had the same idea as you unfortunately <laughs> uh it's essentially just it is a really bad one for one that you have to deck build around because you have to put cards into your extra deck and just because Yu-Gi-Oh is extremely fast and uh, you sort of need every single piece of advantage you get, it's sort of hard to justify giving up a slot or two in your extra deck just to make use for a card that you may or may not even draw. And even if you do draw it, it's at best maybe like a 1 for 1 or a 1.5 for 1. Okay, so... Th this is interesting because we don't obviously you know in hearthstone there's no extra deck right so it's hard to like it's hard to actually see how powerful that is um which is i guess harder to gauge this card on top of it i think the the thing i'm learning over the past couple of cards here is if the card doesn't strictly just say in in a sense you win the game it's not worth it like it's just bad so from now on from this point in the video forward i'm literally going to read the card as does this win you the game if it doesn't it's bad like that's, that's the way we're yeah, going it's with. a pretty good way of thinking about it actually when your opponent activates a monster effect on the field negate the activation and if you do destroy that card then you can apply the following effect banish one monster from your hand and if you do special summon the monster that was destroyed and sent to the graveyard by this effect to your field to negate the effects all right so does this card win you the game <laughs> The trap card, you destroy the card, and then you apply the following effect. I mean, that's pretty good. Go uh, it's go pretty, it, it's, 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 it's pretty good. I mean, does this win you the game? I don't know, man. I don't think it really wins you the game. Okay, sent to the graveyard by the effect of your field, but negate the effect. So when you, if you summon this minion to your side of the board, you can't use the effect ever? Yeah. Okay, this is probably like less than optimal then. I would say below average. Yep, you're 100% right. This card is not that good. <laughs> All right, my methodology is 100%. I feel I feel really scared about the rabbit hole I'm leading you down. It just it just makes sense, man. How could you, why would I put a bad card in my deck that simply doesn't write in text you win the game? Guardian Chimera. Is it Chimera or Chimera? I think it's Chimera. I don't know. I'll speak Greek. Chimera. Oh my god. Okay, this is so long. Look at this card text. I need my freaking reading glasses to okay, read this bro, one. Okay, bro. You get a Hearthstone players when asked to read it more than one <laughs> sentence on a card. Like, uh, goddamn. Three monsters with different names. Must first be fusion summoned using only fusion materials from your hand and field with at least one monster from each. If this card is fusion summoned by a spell card or effect, you could draw cards equal to the number of cards used as material from the hand. If you do, destroy cards from your opponent controls equal to the number of cards used as material from the field. You can only use this effect once per turn. Well, polymerization, I don't know what that is. It's in your graveyard, your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. What is the polymerization? Is that like a spell? It's after? just a spell that says you get to fusion summon a card. Oh, okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> is this a card that literally says win the game? Hold on. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> So here's the thing about this card. Um, I <laughs> let, me, let me paint you a picture. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if this is good. All right. I'm going to correct you a little bit. I'm going to tell you this doesn't have to pop monsters. It can also pop, you know, set spell cards, uh, oh. fa face up stuff. Like it doesn't have to be just monsters. Oh. And you're always summoning this by spell effect. You're all like. It's designed oh, to be okay. summoned by a spell effect. Okay, hold on. Now we're cooking. This is actually a cooking card. Hold on. Okay, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I appreciate the little insight there. Now, this card actually might read now. Win the game. Hold on. I'm doing the... Ma All right, it's probably nutty. Uh, if your opponent can't target this card because you have that card in your graveyard, how do they win the game? It's probably good. I think it's good. You haven't really given me, given me a lot of good cards here, so I'm going to go with it's cooking. All right, so let me paint you a picture. God, so Don't, there, is it bad so or is it average? A, Did you bait me? Let's <laughs> listen, Stevie. Did you bait me? Okay, so there was a deck in Yu-Gi-Oh called Branded Despia, and it was a really good fusion deck. This card took that deck from being, you know, a pretty okay deck to being the definitive best deck of the format. So yeah, this card's nutty. Yes, yes, let's go. I knew it. Did I call it, do a flashback, whoever edits this video? <laughs> flashback. You know, let me paint you a picture. I'm going to think it's bad. And then I don't know you're going to be like, but it's broken. It actually turned out to be that broken, right? This is the card. Okay, perfect. End of flashback. What the hell is this card's name? Hold on. I got to open this in bigger. Kalbeck? Kalbeck, the ancient vanguard. Look at this text. Oh my God. If a card is sent from the hand or deck to your opponent's graveyard, except during the damage step, 
You can target one opponent's special summon monster. Special summon this card from your hand, then return the target monster to the hand. If this card is sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard, you can send the top five cards of each player's deck to the graveyard. Then, if Exchange of the Spirit is in your graveyard, you can set one trap card from your graveyard and you can only use each effect of Kalbeck the Ancient Vanguard once per turn. Oh my god. I mean, man, this card is pretty spicy. This The first prerequisite for this card to be good is that it has to be special summon. But it seems like that's a very common thing for Yu-Gi-Oh decks. What? Man, special summoning? In my, in my fast-paced combo game? Never. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, no, it's not. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? Bro. <laughs> uh, special summon this card from your hand. So, and then you return the target monster to their hand. That like that seems like insane because they just went through all the effort to special summon a monster and then you're like, do it again, but you probably don't have the resources for it, hopefully. Does this win you the game? Probably not, but it is very good. That effect is so specific though. No, it's probably good. It's probably a good card. It, it, there's so much in this card that I feel like it has to be good. Yeah, it's good for sure. Yep, you're correct. This card's cooking. <laughs> Woo! Let's go! Yeah, like you play this in any deck that has like graveyard effects. You could just use this as like an interrupt on your bonus turn while they're trying to set up their combo like you mentioned earlier. Like, card's cooking. Card's spicy. Let's go. Big fan. Hell yeah. Keldo the Sacred Protector. You could discard one other Earth Fairy monster. Special summon this card from your hand. Wait, you can discard one other fairy. Okay. I'm guessing if you discard one, you special summon this menu from your hand is what it's going for. Then add one exchange of the spirit or one card that mentions it from your deck to your hand. Quick effect. You can banish this card from the field of graveyard and target up to three cards in any graveyards or up to five. If exchange of the spirit is in your field or graveyard, shuffle them into your deck. Oh my God. All right, this absolutely rolls people who are using like a graveyard deck. This is this is this is like you you just lost. The card single handedly wins you the game. But does every deck play for the graveyard? Is the question. You can discard one other Earth Fairy monster to special summon this from your hand. That feels like that's very easy to do. Ooh, this is a close one, man. I don't know. I don't know how relevant that really is. Like it, it has to be from your field or graveyard though. Like and then you have to target three cards in the graveyard. So like if they have no cards in their graveyard, this card theoretically just does nothing. You could target cards in your own graveyard if you want to. I mean, okay, I'm gonna go with the fact that because this is, you're building a deck that relies on your graveyard, like your opponent, doing stuff to your opponent is probably just a benefit. I don't know, this is so tough. Man, this is this is probably the hard, I'm gonna go with it's probably fine, but I wouldn't imagine that this card's like broken. So I'll go with like, it's probably fine, but I don't think it's like very, very good. Yeah, unfortunately oh. this card is very, very good. <laughs> oh my God. It's not even the fact that like, you need your opponent to be on a graveyard deck. It's just that a lot of cards just incidentally have, a lot of decks and archetypes just incidentally have effects that interact with your graveyard, like stuff, like monsters that can summon stuff out of the graveyard, cards that shuffle, uh, that return cards from your graveyard to your hand or back to the deck to get you more card advantage. Super generic stuff like that, and just like stopping one of those effects can be enough to win you the game. And if you're against a graveyard deck, then it's fucking lights out, buddy. <laughs> like, it's over. Yeah, okay, so I see what you mean. I see what you mean. So there's, the, the baseline of this card is good, and it only gets better. Absolutely, Which yeah. is the way, the way Okay. God damn it, fuck. All right, oh my God. Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood. What a name. During either, during either turn, except the end phase, quick effect. You can discard this card, apply this effect this turn. You can only use this effect of this card once per turn. Each time your opponent special summons an effect monster during the main or battle phase, you gain life points equal to the monster's attack. If you don't get life points by this effect, your life points are half during the end phase. What the hell? Whoa. Okay, hold on a second. That is... Wait, so just so I'm clear, you can only activate this once per turn, but once per turn means for every single monster during that turn. Correct? Yes. Oh my god. So you get like, you can get like infinite life points if you time this correctly. Or, you know, you could just shotgun it at the start of the turn. Ooh. This is like a... I don't even know how to describe this. It, it, you're, you're, you're kind of 50 50 in here because if you don't get any life points, you just life points are half, but that's it only it only really hurts for the first one, right? So you can never die from this effect because it always is halved. But how relevant is this effect? That's like that seems so crazy strong, but I feel like it's in actual gameplay. It's bad. Why would I do this when I can just kill my opponent is the way I'm thinking about it. Like you don't negate them. Yeah, it's probably not good. It's probably not great. Okay, let me think of this in Hearthstone. 
If it was like for every single monster your opponent summons on their side of the board that turn, you gain health points equal to the minions attack. Would that card see play? I mean, actually, that card would see play at Hearthstone, depending on the cost. It would be very powerful. This would be so annoying. You know, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to just risk it here. Like this card is so unique that I'm going to say it's probably pretty good. It's probably fine. It's fine to good. It's not great. Yeah, that looks good. You are let me pay you a picture. <laughs> OK, actually, let me pay you a picture. <laughs> So, if you said this card was good during any other format, in any other period of time, I would have called. I would have laughed at you and said that this card was cheeks. This card is not cooking, but <laughs> it is really okay. good specifically in this format. You know how I mentioned how tier limit takes ten trillion years till the heat death of the universe to finish a single game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Sure. Yep. So, in Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, for in-person play, they have a thing called Time Rules, and it's just to keep tournaments moving in a pretty orderly fashion. Once the time hits, let's say, 45 minutes in a round, you have to stop play. I already got, I already got what you mean. So, what you're going to say is the, the winner is decided by the person that has the most health, right? So, theoretically speaking, you would have more health than your opponent because you didn't die, therefore you win. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. In this specific format, because they summon so many monsters and they don't actually kill you, you, you just win because of that. But in reality, and most of the time, this card just doesn't do enough because why would you play this when you could just kill your opponent? Yeah, exactly. You basically just put this in when it's really close to time and your opponent starts comboing and you're like, I'm going to activate Dogwood. Oh, what's that? Only 30 seconds left on the round. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, I guess I win. <laughs> Better player, I guess. This card exists currently against the best deck in the format just to troll them theoretically. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's pretty funny. That's actually great. All right, if you give me the point, I got six out of 10, so you're very close. Hey, let's get it. Yeah, I'm pretty good at Yu-Gi-Oh, <laughs> even though I don't play the game. King of let's games go. over here.